And I would like very much for Bertrand to come up to the podium one more time. Bertrand, you're here somewhere, yes? And tell us a little bit about that exhibit and also if you have any other final comments you wanna make. You've been listening all day to people talking about the French, the court, uh, the politicians, the diplomats. Um, so if you have any other thoughts you'd like to express as a result of what you've heard, feel free to do so, and also let us know a little bit about the exhibit. So thank you very much. It's an exhibition which has the support of the uh, French American Cultural Foundation, so we are very grateful for that support to be able to bring this uh, wonderful subject to, to Versailles. And of course, it's a key year, and 2016, um, and um, this exhibition was made possible. It's my colleague Valérie Bajou, who is the, um, the organizer um, of the, the curator of the exhibition, and unfortunately she couldn't be here today. And uh, she has traveled quite extensively um, here in this part of the United States to prepare the exhibition, and I think several of you know her and have met her and I have to say we have to say that the American museums and institutions were extremely generous for this exhibition and we're going to have wonderful loans to evoke the these events between uh, the United States and and France so please do come to Versailles from the 5th of July it will be held in the gallery of battles where we have this wonderful scenography um, created by King Louis Philippe in the 1830s when he transformed the Palace of Versailles, the former residence of the kings, which hadn't been inhabited, lived in since the 6th of October 1789, when he transformed it into a museum devoted to les gloires de la France, the glory of, of France, of French history, and especially creating this huge gallery, which is twice the length of the Hall of Mirrors, uh, in the south wing of the um, palace, destroying two levels of flats and princely apartments, actually, uh, thank, um, unfortunately. But this is an amazing collection of paintings, uh, either paintings that had been painted since the 18th century through his regime, through the 1830s, but by very different regimes, from the Ancien Regime, the old monarchy, through the revolution, to the First Empire, the Restauration, and so on. And paintings commemorating great events and great battles of French history of those years, but then eventually, which couldn't be displayed in official palaces when a new regime arrived. And so the storage of the public, these palaces, were full of huge canvases that for political reasons couldn't be used. And Louis Philippe had this wonderful idea to take them out of storage, out of them, of their rolls and, and roll them up and create these huge galleries, which is uh, focusing on the military history of France between uh, Tolbiac by Clovis in 469, if I'm wrong, but we'll have to check that, to 1808 to the Battle of Wagram. Of course, he didn't go further to other battles, which were not won. And so among these uh, paintings, so there were paintings commissioned by these regimes, but also they were not covering the entire history of military actions. And so he had the most famous painters of his time, uh, he commissioned them paintings to fill up the gaps. And for example, uh, Eugène Delacroix was commissioned one painting um, about the Tibur battles by, in the 13th century and several other paintings and especially a painting by Couder evoking the Yorktown uh, victory. And it's around this big painting uh, about Yorktown that the exhibition will be uh, displayed. And at the same moment, Versa is preparing, and I'm working on another project uh, for next year, for 2017, yes, working with the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York about an exhibition called The Visitors to Versailles in the Ancien Regime. That is to say, Versailles being a public space, a public palace, that's the, the will 
uh, of Louis XIV, especially when he moved the court and the, the government to Versailles in 1682. He wanted the palace being a public space as much as his life was a public life and uh, so that's why it's a very special uh, story among the story of palaces or royal palaces in Europe that we'd like to show and to show that anyone could come to Versailles one had to be decently dressed for men wearing a sword and a hat so there's only one man who didn't follow the rule you know whom I'm talking about and um, and so anyone could come and see the king, could see the, most, the state apartments at least. And, uh, and uh, so not only the French, of course, but from all over the world. And people were invited to great embassies from, from countries like the Samis embassy in 1686, uh, but also lesser known embassies and from really all over the world, from uh, um, African kingdoms at the time Louis XIV, um, but also from, um, from America, from the Americas. And of course, we'll have a section devoted to the um, Franklin and his colleagues coming to Versailles, but since had been already in the previous year's exhibition, it's not the, the main topic, but we'll have other American visitors. Of course, visitors that came as tourists from Boston in the 1750s or 60s before the, the war as uh, British subjects, uh, like the other people from Great Britain, but people who came from America even earlier. And we know that in 1668, for example, there was a first uh, American chief, Indian chief, who came to Versailles. He came to Paris, but he was eventually brought to Versailles. And uh, he offered to Louis XIV uh, canoe that eventually was going to float and be used on the Grand Canal in Versailles. And later on, there were other embassies from uh, American chiefs during the reign of Louis XV, until the last one, I think, if I'm not wrong, in 1754, and with more presence. Unfortunately, these objects are very difficult to identify now in the former royal collections, if they haven't disappeared, but we'll try to uh, show these uh, objects and evoke these uh, Native Americans coming to, to Versailles in their own right and to uh, try alliance with the, with the French, to try create alliance with the French or to protect themselves against the, the British. So I think that will be an interesting part of the, the, the exhibition next year, which is going to be open first in Versailles, in October 2017, and then we'll move to the Met in April 2018. So if you don't have the opportunity to come to, to Versailles next year, you will see it in New York in 2018. So I don't know if I... And um, yes, just one more word. We, we, we talk about the, inf the impact of, uh, of uh, this uh, war in, uh, for independence in the United States and the impact, but you have, of course, it was uh, very important and all these uh, debates this afternoon these, uh, stressed that very strongly. It was a, a very deep political um, encounters between these countries. But in France, you have to add one more layer to that aspect. You have to add the social and the artistic and the fashion aspect. And that, uh, that could be a talk in its own right. And for example, there was uh, a rage for the type of fashion that Franklin brought to France. It's just plain uh, um, peasant's um, brown uh, costume. And whenever there was a, that type of visit, there was a fashion starting. So um, French men and ladies want something more elaborate, maybe, most of the time. But uh, in the following years, in 1781, when John Paul Jones was received by Louis XVI and granted a French order, which was quite unknown, I think, in that time, he was very much admired as a great admiral. 
and he was given a sword by Louis XVI, as well as a, a medal. And um, there was a rage for him among the ladies at court, and even the queen, who had been very, maybe the most reluctant from the members of the royal family to adhere to the um, sympathy for the American Revolution. She knew from her Habsburg background that was not good for the old uh, um, monarchical, mon monarchy system in Europe. Maybe he had a, that she had that feeling. But when John Paul Jones, this uh, handsome man, came to Versailles, um, she said that she would love to hang a feather on his hat. And obviously she didn't do it herself, that was not done, but then there was a fashion of the chapeau a la, a la, jo, a la, a la Jones. And each time there was a, a visit, there was a, a fashion starting in, in Versailles in Paris. And after the, the naval victories of the French vessels, you know that among them there was the, the Belle Poule. And then there was these huge uh, wigs uh, for women with in the hair, the, a model of the, of the vessel that was carried proudly by these ladies, which almost doubled their height, actually, and to the mockery of the British uh, caricaturists. So this is really important to understand also the, the interest and to keep on the interest in the French society for uh, these visitors from abroad and for, from these political, very important political events, but it has also always uh, a fashion uh, side uh, to them. There is always a fashion side to them, I think, in France, especially in those uh, critical years. <laughs>